Today, I have a question for you. Did you ever eat dirt when you were a child, or sand maybe at the beach, or even food after it has fallen on the floor? Most probably, all of us have done that. But now the question is, would you do that today? This is less probable. There might be some brave people here to do that. But most of us wouldn't do that. And the reason is that it's because we are all aware, and today more than ever, that microbes are everywhere. And so we are living in a very strange world, a world where we humans are scared of microbes. So today I'm going to tell you something that hopefully will make you love microbes, and maybe some of you will even think about eating dirt again. So, as you know, microbes are everywhere. They can be in the air, on every surface that you touch, in the soil, and even on the food that you eat. And most people assume that all these germs are dangerous. But what you may not realize is that trillions of microbes are living in and on your body right now. Not only they can be bacteria, but also fungi and viruses and small single-celled organisms called archaea and protozoa. And guess what? They're even 10 times more numerous than your own human cells. So in short, we are made of microbes. That's the good news for you today. Now, what are these microbes doing in our bodies? So the first um, thing that most people know about is that microbes help us digest the food that we eat. And this is true, but lately scientists have discovered many other functions for these microbes. And I will summarize them into three main points. The first one is that microbes control the growth of each other. They will promote the growth of this one and stop the growth of this other one to maintain an equilibrium and avoid the overgrowth of pathogens and maybe having you getting an infection. So microbes protect us from other microbes. The other thing that they are doing is that they recycle the bile acid that your liver continuously produces to uh, digest the food that you eat. And these bile acids, if not recycled, by specific microbes, they're able to travel via the blood up to the brain and disrupt the protective barrier we have against other viruses and microbes. Again, microbes protect, protect us from other microbes. And finally, they do something very important. They produce metabolites, many and different uh, metabolites. These metabolites will have different functions. Some of them will strengthen the junctions between the cells of your gut to avoid leakage of toxins and allergens into your body. Other metabolites will enhance the production of very important hormones, like the hormone that makes you feel hungry, and the hormone that controls your insulin production. And finally, some metabolites will directly interact with your nervous system, with your nerves, and your brain. And so we have evidence now that microbes can control how you think and how you feel. And so your diversity is the diversity of your microbes. So let's stop for a minute and think about how we are treating our microbes in everyday life. Whenever our lifestyle somehow broke the equilibrium in the ecosystem and some pathogens managed to overgrow, we humans got this habit of fighting all of the microbes together. So, for example, uh, when we want to protect our plants from a specific pest, we spray pesticides that do kill the pest, but also it kills the other microbes. When we are scared of a specific virus around, we spray chemicals uh, around us, which do kill the pathogen, but also kill the other microbes. And we are now used to clean our hands with antibacterial gel instead of soap and water. 
and that surely removes the pathogen in question, but also eliminates all the natural flora we have on our hands and supposedly there to protect us. So here I want to show you something. This is a picture, it's an illustration done by my colleague, Dr. Claire McVeigh, of one of the most important results we have found in a clinical study I have led in Qatar. That study was about autism. And what we have done is that we collected stool samples, poop, from healthy volunteers, from children with autism, and others with gastrointestinal disorders only. And what we did is that we extracted the DNA from those samples to find out what bacteria and fungi they had. And if you were able to look at the inside of the gut of healthy children and children with autism, this is how it would look like. As you can see, because some microbes are absent, others are thriving. And these other ones can be more pathogenic microbes. In fact, they are. We could kill those microbes with, with antibiotics, and it would resolve some of the symptoms, but again, that would kill the other microbes. So how do we solve this dilemma? And the answer lies in this picture. The key might be diversity of the microbes themselves. So there is a saying, um, that I like, that says, you are what you eat. And this saying makes a lot of sense uh, to me because not only when you eat, you feed your microbes. So depending on what you eat, you don't feed the same microbes. Um, but also because this is the main route for getting new microbes, if you think about it. For example, your phone lies on the bench full of microbes. You take your phone, you text a little bit, and then with the same hand, you eat. Some people will bite their nails, and then, hey, they see their friends and shake their hand. We share microbes with the people around us and with our environment. Another example is babies. During the first few weeks of their lives, they get microbes from the principal caregiver. It might be the mom, it can be the dad, or it can be the nanny. And later, when they start moving around and touching things, they get microbes from other sources, and from the food that they eat and the non-food that they eat. So, and I remember my mother told me that when I was a child, I ate poop. So that explains maybe why I'm studying this. And so, talking about poop, this is when I start telling you about something that's a little bit dis disgusting, maybe, but a very good illustration of my message for you today. About 3,000 years ago, doctors used to treat their patients who came to them for gastrointestinal problems with a soup. They called that the yellow soup. That soup was made of poop from healthy people, and they used to prepare that and give it to the patients. And apparently it used to work, because there are still evidence that this was a very common practice in many cultures, until um, even during the World War II, we have evidence that African Bedouins used to treat German soldiers with camel feces. And lately, scientists found out that poop transplant from a healthy donor to uh, a patient is a good way to treat uh, people from a very deadly infection called Clostridium difficile infection. And every year, believe it or not, thousands of lives are saved just with a fecal transplant or a poop transplant. But then later scientists started doing more experiments and they found something very strange. They found that Diabetes can be transferred as well with a poop transplant. Obesity can also be transferred with a poop transplant. Drug resistance can also be transferred with a poop transplant. Until something very bad happened. Some people died after a fecal transplant. 
They died because the set of microbes that they received came from someone who was completely resistant to all drugs. And so then the day they needed to be treated by drugs, they were not responding. And so they died. And this is when the FDA officially recognized poop as a drug. Because it is a drug now, the only way to study this is to run clinical trials. And Today, there are more than 450 clinical trials registered in the world that are trying to re-inject what? Injecting diversity within the gut of people to find treatment not only for autism, but also for diabetes, obesity, inflammatory diseases, neurological diseases, and even cancers. So, let's go back to my question. Will cleanliness eventually kill us? Well, I think that there will be times when we'll need to be cautious and clean towards microbes. And there might be times as well when some people will have to eat poop. But if all of us culture the diversity of microbes within themselves and protect the diversity of microbes around them, hopefully we won't have to reach those two extremes. Thank you.